Hi everybody, I'm Simon Dingle, uh, Operations Director for Carillion, uh, responsible for, for all of our activities in, in Birmingham City. What I wanted to do today, I, I'm not going to show you the heritage video because I'm going to run out of time, but what, what I will do is, is give you a quick run through uh, on what we're doing in Birmingham at the moment. Um, give you a, 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 um, a fly through video for, for the last tender we submitted. Uh, some of the joys and challenges of working in Birmingham, and then uh, a, a video produced on Paradise, which, which, is, which is a drone video. Does, does that sound okay? Yeah. I'm glad you didn't say no, because I'd have had it then, by the way. <laughs> right, Carillion in Birmingham. Whoops, sorry, two at once. Uh, our little team, um, I say little team, there's probably about 50 of us, the, our core construction team have been, been based uh, literally 300 yards that way since 2007, 2008, uh, when we bid the Library of Birmingham, uh, which, which completed 2013, uh, opened September 2013, and we've, we've now moved on to uh, obviously Paradise Circus and looking for other bits and pieces, other, other, other great projects in Birmingham. So, so that, if you like, that, that red line with the library included is, is our, our sort of central core really in, in the city centre. Currently, um, we are we're, we're involved with the first or, or constructing the first 150 million uh, of works on on Paradise, uh, which is which I'll show you in some detail a bit later, which is which is all of the enabling works, the highways works, the um, um, logistics of moving all the pedestrians and all the public around the city, um, actually doing all of the utilities uh, diversions, all of the demolition, and then constructing the basement podium up to podium up, uh, across the site and then constructing one chamber in square. One chamber in square is, is the building on the, uh, on the right uh, there. Uh, so that's, that's one chamber which actually starts on site in January. Uh, as of yesterday, you'll see the first uh, precast structures going in into the basement on, on Paradise. That's the whole job, uh, which is worth 500 million which completes in uh, 2026, which is the strategy. So again, for, for my team, it'd be nice to have that sort of continuity on various, various aspects of that project, hopefully to go through for another, what, eight years? I know this is quite uh, quick, but hopefully any questions at the end. As I say, we, we also, the same team, completed the 190 million pound uh, Library of Birmingham. Um, back in September, and, and we've also gone through a soft landings experience, which I'm sure most of you are aware what soft landings involves, which, which again for me was was a real eye opener, and, and it has been a real it's been, it's been a really interesting aspect to the project that, that I was never aware of, uh, and, and again for us the actual soft landings offering proved quite useful because because that was one of our key USPs that we developed for the University of Birmingham Library, and we actually used that. On, on the UOB library, and again, there is a, there is a team now still deployed on, on that library work, working with the, with, the, with the team post completion. Uh, and there you go, and that's the, uh, the 44 million pound sort of follow-on project to the Library of Birmingham, which is the university library, which I say uh, was completed earlier this year. The other, the other big one uh, for Carillion in Birmingham at the moment is, is obviously MMH, the Midland Met Hospital. Uh, which is 430 million completion 2018 uh, on site, and you can see the sort of six tower cranes uh, just outside the city again that way. If, if when you go out and you have a look, that project's ongoing. Frame, frame, frame is now nearing completion, and the envelope has started. Right, hopefully the first video. I'm going to show you. Uh, oops, it goes back to where it should do. As part of part of the Paradise Circus, um, oh dear, I'm not going to touch that again. This is actually the the uh, the, the hopefully it's going to come up the video that we produced as part of our uh, one Chamberlain, two Chamberlain uh, square uh, bid offering. So hopefully it's going to work. If not go dudunk. And the point, the point of this video really for us was to show the interface between one Chamberlain and two Chamberlain and also the, uh, the, the demolition 
I'm going to shut up and just just let you sort of talk through, really. Because one of the key things for us is, is that the, the demolition, phase two of the demolition, which is the yellow areas, carries on whilst two Chamberlain is... You're going to get it done sorted, aren't you? I think I'll put it in the wrong socket. Is it in the wrong... I can't see. If it goes boing now and you're jumping... I can't leave it. No. Not going to work. So again, that shows you one, one chamberlain completes probably about six months before, uh, before two chamberlain. That's really strange. I don't understand why the sound's not playing. I've got a second one with the sound on. I don't know if we're going to be able to sort that, but not are we? you got your uh, facade going on now. And one of the key things about one chamber and two chamberlain is again, we're talking about the pedestrians. As of next September, the, uh, oh, this gentleman's gonna come down and show us how it's done now. play the second video because that's got the sound on it as well. I was going to say one of the one of the key things about the interface with one 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 chamberlain and two chamberlain is, is that no don't worry about it we're going to move on otherwise we're going to run out of time. So I'm not sure about showing you the second video either because obviously that's got sound on it. If it don't work it don't work. How's that gone that for? Now we've got things down there. Right. Can we get in there. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Joys and challenges then. First thing for us, one of the key things we said is focusing on customer excellence. Now you may think, what on earth? that slide means, for, for us, a lot of sort of, um, it was interesting, we, 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 had a, we had a conference about 10 years ago where, where, the, uh, where the, the chief exec from John Lewis came down and gave, gave us a, a presentation about customer excellence. And the, and the one thing that, he, that, 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 there's a load of stuff that came out of that, but the one thing that, that he said that sort of stuck with me is that customer excellence is, actu is actually more about your internal customer, which, which is us, the people working in, in with, within the company, rather than uh, your external clients. Unless you get your internal customer um, approach sorted and, and everybody is, is going the same way, you'll never get a, true, uh, you know, a truly excellent customer experience, external client. So again, I'm, that, that to me is a sort of subject I could talk to for hours, which you probably don't want me to. Uh, it it does, does include uh, something he said about... Um, the royal family on Christmas Day, which again, if anyone wants to ask me afterwards, is, it was a really interesting uh, image that sort of sticks with you. But again, to me, that's one of the key things we do in Birmingham. It's about customer excellence, understanding you build that from the internal, your internal customers out to the external client, not the other way around. The one team culture, again, for us, the great thing about our team is it's a pretty consistent team. Uh, as I say, there's, there's, there's up to 50 of us, but the same core team sticks there stays there and, and uh, acts as a team, which, which I don't underestimate the value of that. Uh, team that stays together, plays together. 
Uh, believe it or not, the Carillion team actually go on annual holidays together, which is pretty unique. Which, and, and I tell you what, the, the one thing I will say, the one thing everybody says, well, so what? The interesting thing for me is when we, uh, when we got the feedback from the completion of the Library of Birmingham, that the one thing, and, and this, is, this, this may be of use to you or not, I don't know, the one thing that um, the client said to us is, you know, we had four contractors come in to bid for this team, to pitch for this, to pitch for this project, and it was only the Carillion team who came over as a team. I.e., they, they knew each other, you, you were just a team. And he said, and, and I don't think, unless you see that, no, nobody understands how important that is. Because if you see other people who are pitching for a job and, and they're quite obviously just a team who've been welded together for that bid, it's not the same. So again, that has stuck with me as a sort of silver bullet. Don't, don't underestimate the impact of coming over as a team. Uh, I'm not going to say too much about that. Key thing for us is we've now, since 2008, delivered over 5 million person hours without a serious accident. So nobody has gone home in a, uh, in a white van, in an ambulance. So for us, that's massively important. Soft landings, I've mentioned previously. Again, for us, that's, that's a USP. Procurement of some of these big projects, again, for us, that they're all two-stage tenders um, or negotiations, um, but very much designed to cost um, rather than value engineering. So, you know, I'm sure all of you sort of appreciate what that means. But again, for us, the, the one thing that I would say on the Library of Birmingham, it was a two-stage tender, but it, it was basically procured on the equivalent of a PFI approach, whereby there was no break clause. So, so unlike a traditional two-stage tender, where if you can't agree contract, program, price, you could walk away, there was no, there was no walk away clause from the Library of Birmingham. We all, and I think, again, that's vitally important in respect of the, the team, team ethos and delivering something special. The only things we were told w w was that we had to deliver a project for under 200 million. Um, it was going to be 30,000 30, square feet, uh, and it would sit within that, that, that blue line, that, that blue hoarding line. A number of those things changed, but, the, but the, the things that weren't allowed to change were you've still got to deliver it, however big it is, whatever it looks like, you've still got to deliver it within 200 million. And the second thing was it's got to be open in September 2013. So for us, th those messages actually welded us together as a team. Um, it wasn't a two-stage tender where you could come in and you know, say whatever you thought and, and, and then try and negotiate. The whole team was focused on delivering the best public library in the world by September 2013, safely and for under 200 million. And again, that really shapes you as a team as, as to what your approach is. I'm not going to say too much about that. Again, demolition in a live environment. Any, anybody who sort of walk, works, walks past Paradise Circus uh, will see that ongoing. And that, that is the sort of final video that I'll show you in a minute, um, which for us is, is, is I suppose that's one of, the, one of the most satisfying things about Paradise Circus it, it is the fact that you know, we've demolished all of that library w without, again, an accident full stop. No, no, nobody has been hurt on that site in respect to the demolition activities full stop. And to get through that from, from day one you know, is, is a m massive um, accolade to everybody who's, who's out there working. And um, so for me, that, that, that's, that's the best thing we've achieved. One of the other things about Birmingham, which when, when I first sort of came up here in 2007, that I, that I didn't appreciate was the importance of the German market. <sighs> you know, when, when you start off, you think, oh, the German market, you know. Actually, it seems to me that uh, from about November through to January, the whole of, the whole of Birmingham revolves around the German market. The, the one thing we cannot do is, is, is stop the German market. We can't, you know. And again, the whole thing flows around it. And, and, but, but to me, you actually, when you go out there, you realise how important that is to Birmingham. But, but, as, a, but as, a, uh, as a construction um, company, actually delivering around that is, is a ph phenomenal challenge, but it's also a great opportunity. Uh, I know most of our team whinge inherently because as soon as the market appears, rather than having a 15-minute walk to New Street Station, it's about a 45-minute walk, but there you go. Uh, one of the things that you sort of might not be aware of, again, is, is, is some of the challenges we face in sort of in respect of neighbours and stakeholders. There are uh, over 40 sort of key neighbours 
around the perimeter of, of Paradise Circus. Again, all of those, all of those stakeholders, um, organisations, whether it be, be Birmingham Museum and Art Ga Gallery, um, New Street, all of those people need to be kept up to date. And, and one of the things that we've, we've done on that is actually uh, grabbed hold of it and, 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 and are trying to do that in real time. So, so again, all the social media, Twitter, all of those sort of things we've actually grabbed hold of on Paradise, which for us was, was a real step change and something we haven't done before. Um, and again, it's a challenge because obviously some of the things that come in, you, you don't expect, but you've got, to, you've got to react to it in real time. Okay, I'm going to run on then very quickly. I'm sure, I'm sure the last sort of challenge is, the challenge that I'm going to mention for Paradise is obviously, again, you, you probably won't have seen it, but when we, we, when we took, took occupation of the site, that, that was the project. Uh, i.e. an island with, with, with a ring road going around it. One of the key things for us uh, in that first uh, enabling works was actually switching that to a, to a two-way system, which happened last November. So, again, that was achieved on, on, uh, on date, which has actually now opened up the site, as you'll see if you go out there, to show the, uh, uh, the actual state. I'm going to hopefully show you the drone video now, which will be, I promise you, under two minutes but without sound. I can sing if you'd like. <laughs> Don't do that, Simon. OK, all right. But again, this, this was taken back, back in the summer. So uh, <coughs> Which again, it's, it's better with the, with the sound on because it, it does sort of. But again, that, that, that is the team that's got, got through all of that without, without an accident. Full stop, which is, which is amazing, positive. And we, we finished the phase one demolition, which is the Bay 16, uh, what's called Waptastic. We finished that at Christmas. Phase two demolition, uh, which, which is basically Fletcher's Walk, as, as, it, as I showed you on the, on the first video. So that Fletcher's Walk demolition starts uh, August, September next year and is completed by Christmas. And obviously the one thing I haven't mentioned is, is the big challenge for us on Paradise is the, uh, the tunnels that run underneath the whole of the project, whether it be the main Ratcliffe um, service tunnels or indeed the A38M um, highways tunnels. So all of this demolition has to be done in, you know, in accordance with uh, an approval in principle, uh, an app or an emergency preparedness plan so that we don't overload the tunnel in any way, shape or form. And we've got uh, live tunnel monitoring in place um, and a tunnel engineer set up in our offices who monitors that tunnel every day, every minute, such that uh, because of the age and the loading capacity of that tunnel, you, you basically have to monitor it uh, to, 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 to a millimetre. Um, and we've got a sort of three knock system whereby if, if it does start moving and it keeps moving, if it moves, it keeps moving over three, <coughs> four minute periods we have to evacuate the A38 um, road work, works, which, touch wood, we never got, got to that yet. We did get, uh, we did get to a two-knot situation. Um, I had to go and have a cup of tea and a lay down. But the, but the interesting thing is, it's not the, the problem you get with when you're monitoring to, to one mill, it's not to do with the tunnel physically moving, it's to do with the environmental conditions. So the, wor the worst thing that you get is if you get a traffic jam and all of those all of those cars are in there producing fumes, that that will flow. That, that the danger is that will throw out the the, the the monitoring to give you a sort of movement of one mil. So then it becomes a value judgment as to is the tunnel moving or is it because you've got five million cars stuck in there with everybody uh, revving their revving their engines. So that's very nearly it. Okay. Thank you very much. Apologies for the sound. <laughs>